First off, can I just say, it's not a sponsored video, but you know what? This is my 10th ill sketchbook. Oh my goodness. Hi there. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla. I'm gonna give you one hint about what this video is going to be about, and it's gonna be this. I haven't seen it yet, but my childhood heart is dying inside. I will see it this week, hopefully. But I wanted to come back to you guys and tell you a little story on why I kind of, I disappeared off of YouTube, but I didn't disappear all together. And it started one day with, um, I was recording a video in our apartment in Indiana and I had kind of a small space to work in and I have this giant DSLR Canon camera and I had it rigged to where it could balance easily on the tripod until one day this thing came down and knocked me square on the top of my head and it hurt. It hurt a ton to the point that, you know, I was crying and my husband Steven came over and he was like helping me. He's like, are you okay? And he's giving me- I was me... scared to death because of how hard it hit you in the head. <laughs> it was bad. It was like concussion level bad. And this camera with Are you a... making a YouTube video? I am. Is this like your first YouTube video in forever? It is. Hi everybody. <laughs> Steven. Okay, bye everybody. <laughs> But seriously, how, how much weight do you think this DSLR camera is when it was this high up and it was coming towards me? How, well, how much weight? Shelby's excited you're making a video too. It had to be a good five pounds. It's a good five pounds. It hurt. Swinging that really hurt. Yeah, it really did. So after the camera came crashing into my head, I just sat there and I was reflecting and I was having a hard time and it just got to a point where it went, why am I even doing this and I kid you not it wasn't it I can tell you when it actually happened because I looked over on like the sidebar of my final cut like program and I could see the last video that I recorded when it fell into my head was um the inktober 2021 sketchbook tour so that's when I just kind of gave up and if you guys look at my videos you can see the last video that I posted was on October 1st 2021 when uh Walt Disney World was doing their 50th anniversary and I did that whole little like fun video and I just kind of sat there and I was like why am I doing this why am I doing my YouTube videos and I was looking at the views and the subscriber count and I just felt disheartened to the point that it wasn't like a restriction on my mental health but it was complete and utter burnout and as artists I really do think we all get burnout in some areas. Some people will say that it's like a complete shut off of art, but that was never me. Because the thing was, is that I was enjoying making shorter videos and shorter content for TikTok and Instagram. And I didn't see how I could do that on YouTube. And then of course, like I figured out like a couple weeks ago, if you guys couldn't tell YouTube shorts was like a thing. <laughs> But anyways, I, I'll come back to that later. But I just, I needed a break because burnout is a real, real thing. And that's what I got. I got burnout from YouTube. And I just felt like all of my content wasn't good enough on YouTube. It wasn't going anywhere. But you know, on TikTok and on Instagram, it was going places. All my little short videos and my reels, they were doing great. And it just seems that I even get, recently I've noticed, I get more attention on my shorter content. So then I thought, I just need to reevaluate and come back to it. So Let's fast forward a couple months later and then a lot of months later, let's just go back to this past summer of 2022. My husband and I actually moved back to my home state, North Carolina, and that was a huge move. And right on the day that we had the rest of our stuff, the little itty bitty pieces of our stuff packed away into our van and we were moving to North Carolina that day like closed on the apartment, did the walkthrough, and we were ready to leave. I had noticed that my back really started to hurt moving and picking up stuff. And you know, as we get older, and I am a dinosaur age now, considering all of you look at older people as <laughs> dinosaurs, 
You guys know how you do like a jump scoot to readjust yourself and sitting in a car, on a couch, or anything like that. So my husband went in to return our router that we got from our like our service in Indiana. And as I was waiting in the van, um, I scooted, shuffled, jumped. If that's a thing, it sounds like a dance move. But that's what I did to readjust into my seat. And the moment I came down with my bottom hitting the seat, I felt complete pain. It felt like I actually snapped my spinal cord, but it turned out it was a herniated disc and I couldn't move. I, I spent that entire drive in complete misery. And that's about a nine hour drive from Indiana to NC if you take certain routes or if you hit traffic. And because every time I had to use the bathroom or eat, I could not move. I couldn't get out of the seat. So I had to go to a chiropractor for about three weeks, just adjusting. The first week it was like every day I went in. And that's when I realized that, you know, I was just, I was fed up with my health too. This past mis miserable summer, past miserable summer, I would always remember summer 2022 as a miserable summer. The summer. Um, it, it was so bad. There was, um, we did a lot, a lot of racing and stuff and I'm a photographer for one of uh, my dad's racing series. And we were at a track that was in Dillon, South Carolina and it was in the middle of July and it was the hottest. It was so bad. This can be a little bit TMI, but it was so hot and so bad. I even got a unbearable like um, UTI and kidney infection. It was terrible. I mean, to the point that I was getting a fever from it. It was that bad and it was just it was the worst. It was the absolute worst. And I, I felt so beat up. I think it took me a week to even rec recover from that. It took antibiotics and tons and tons of like alkaline water and Powerade and Gatorade and all the fun stuff. And let me tell you, a lot of the times I kind of had in the back of my head, I really should get back to YouTube because I do enjoy making longer content videos because I enjoy watching a lot of artists on here or just people like on TikTok and Instagram. I love watching longer content videos. It's just, it's something great to put on to my, um, my iPad or my computer. And while I'm working on something or if I'm editing pictures or something, I love having them up so I can listen and I can see what they're doing. And maybe I'm even drawing along with them. I've been doing that a lot. And I would highly suggest that you start drawing with me right now. <laughs> uh, make a Mario thing with me now. And I'm going kind of slow so you can see how I approach every bit of process or coloring or just any kind of technique. So right around the time of Inktober, um, I thought maybe I should get back into YouTube and do some Inktober videos. And then a crazy bad thing happened where Steven was rear-ended. And I'm talking, I'm not talking like sitting at a stoplight and, um, you know, somebody taps you on the back of the rear end of your car. And it wasn't like that. It was, he was trying to wait for a guy who was turning left into a business. And this guy came at him about 50 miles per hour. We totally believe he was texting and driving which you should never do. And he did never looked up. He never saw Steven's stopped car waiting for a guy to turn left. He hit him so hard that Steven like got lurched forward to the point, you know, like how football players, they get hit pretty hard. And even though they don't come in contact with something like their foreheads or their heads hit something, when that impact happens, your brain, his brain, got thrown against his own skull to the point that he had a concussion and that was just like let's go we're going to the hospital because after he didn't he didn't get in an ambulance or anything but after the car crash and after we had taken the car to the shop on this it wasn't about 30 minutes later he started not forming sentences properly so i was like oh my gosh we're going to the hospital so that was pretty traumatic <laughs> traumatic and dramatic and poor steven you know it just more and more things kept happening and i just kept putting off youtube but i was always making shorter content which was just easier for me at the moment obviously steven is completely fine thank god you heard him chime in at the beginning of the video 
So after the miserable summer, I, you know, the thing is, is that I got my old job back as an art teacher at my old, like, after school arts program, and I do their sets for their theater shows, and I also do, like, a couple days a week for art classes and so teaching like cartoon art and or painting like watercolor and stuff and that's a lot of fun I love it and I'm so happy that I have that job back and that was the main reason why we moved back to North Carolina because I had some work down here and then of course Stephen found a ton of work down here too so our lives really did a topsy-turvy number on both of us we never thought that we would move to North Carolina, so that was something different and fun. But the reason why I'm telling all of this is to you because I just, I disappeared off the side of the planet. And if some of you did find me on Instagram posting my reels or like TikTok and posting my reels, not reels, uh, videos, just shorter content because that's where I was having the most fun. So that's the thing, I never quit art. And I don't think I ever could. I think it would drive me absolutely insane if I gave up art altogether. It's something that I truly enjoy. I think art is such an amazing therapeutic exercise because I have social anxiety, like bad social anxiety. I hate crowds, absolutely hate it. I will always tell people if you have anything going on in your life and you just feel like your mental health is on the brink of bleh, then art is such a great gateway, always, always. I think it helps get emotions out, it helps free creativity, plus just having it as a part of your life, like sketchbooks, everything, oh my goodness, it's, it's such a great outlet for stress, anxiety, and it's a world almost that we want to get into. And it's just like, it's a way to challenge ourselves. If we're failing in different areas of our lives, it's a way to challenge ourselves in different ways. Be you know, sometimes I'm loving traditional art. I will always love traditional art. I love working on like expressions. I love working on coloring techniques. But the biggest challenge in my life is like my iPad and procreate digital artwork. I grew up totally traditional and I kind of dove into digital art a little bit but having digital art now becoming a bigger influence in this world I'm thinking gee I need to up my skill a little bit so I'm d d diving into that you know it's kind of like motivation and finding new outlets for me to conquer because you know I'm an adult I'm old and I'm just looking for different ways like, you know, what can I do? What kind of goals can I give myself now that I'm grown up and I don't have teachers or professors or necessarily my parents telling me what to do? What can I do for myself? So I really focused in on digital art and trying to get better at that and plus sketchbook, filling up an entire sketchbook. So that's where this video comes into today. I want to fill this Illo sketchbook. And can we just talk about over the years that I've been kind of MIA? I, it hasn't been years, it's probably been a full year. A year and a half maybe. But I have tried different sketchbooks. I even got like a Crescent render sketchbook and it's a no bleed through sketchbook. And if you want to see any of those fun videos, they're over on TikTok or Instagram. I tried that one and it's pretty impressive, but I wasn't, I, I didn't like the way that I love Ohuhu markers. And that's all that I'm using with today. Not once again, not a sponsor. I just love them so much, but I love my Ohuhu markers. And what kept happening was that is like the ink, my Micron pens that I also used for this video, my Micron pens were constantly bleeding with my Ohuhu markers. But if you notice here, the Ohuhu markers and my Micron pens are not bleeding. They're not smudging, but the Render Crescent Sketchbook constantly bled into each other and smeared. And the faces that I ruined in that sketchbook because the paper just couldn't get its crap together. <laughs> so I didn't like it. I think I quit halfway through that sketchbook and then I went to a moleskin and 
I remember that I used to love it, but now I kind of don't really love it. Let me tell you about the sketchbook and the love of my life. I mean, I love it. The only like con that I see with it is that it is a spiral sketchbook. And sometimes, you know, spiral sketchbooks are so infuriating because if the spirals ever get out of like the little a whole ruts, whatever, and then they start like coming out of the paper. Oh, it's such a catastrophe in my opinion. But anyways, I went and I'm taking like gesture drawing classes with Todd Brightman, the Disney artist who's incredible, great class if you guys ever wanna get into gesture drawing. Once again, not sponsored, just love them. <laughs> but it's the Canson XL Mixed Media Rough. Originally went in and this Canson sketchbook was of course Michael's has amazing sales and I got this on sale because I wanted to have a nice sturdy sketchbook for my gesture drawing classes and then I realized that oh my goodness I love it if you if you ever use any alcohol based markers on it oh it blends so beautifully it just blends it's 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 like pouring milk into your coffee or your matcha latte. You know how it just goes whoosh and it blends together? That's what it's like. That's what it's like. It's such, it's, it's, I'm getting excited thinking about it. Excited. <laughs> um, it's just, it's so pleasing to an artist when alcohol markers go beautifully on top of a piece of paper. And yeah it's beautiful so if you need a sketchbook and you want to have like different pieces of paper it does have the option of the little dots that you can rip out which is super nice it's good sturdy paper it's acid free let's see are you acid free um, i feel like i'm asking a sketchbook if it's on drugs or something i don't know it doesn't say there is a cross out of a mushroom <laughs> yes it is acid free. I just found it. But what the heck does the X, the little cross out of the mushroom mean? Like, <laughs> I'm just thinking, is this like a zombie or something? I just immediately thought of The Last of Us. What does that even mean? <laughs> but anyways, yes, love this sketchbook. If you guys are looking for a new one or if you want one that has like ripped out paper option, go get this one. It's so good. Um, but then here's Illo and this is the first time that I've had an Illo in a very, very long time. And this is the first page that I've used with, you know, this Illo sketchbook. This is the number 10 Illo sketchbook. And as I'm going through it, I don't know if you guys have noticed it, but after working with this Canson mixed, me mixed media rough paper, I see that the Ohuhu markers are kind of going into the Illo sketchbook paper a little bit more lighter than what I intended and you can see it's still a bit streaky. Now the thing is is that this is a sketchbook and sketchbooks should be creative freedom. They should be used for to try different techniques. They should be just to get your thoughts down, to get pieces down, to get your ideas down, whatever. It's supposed to be something fun. Sketchbooks do not have to be perfect. And I'm tired of people like freaking out over their sketchbooks having to be, <gasps> they have to be immaculate and perfect. No, they don't. Just draw fun stuff, guys. That's all you have to do. But I saw that, you know, the paper is reacting a little bit differently. Like the paper is not taking the Ohuhu markers as well as my Canson does. And of course you guys will start to realize this as you get older and you have a bunch of different sketchbooks. Um, I noticed it with my moleskin too. I actually got an eight by five art moleskin sketchbook. Like it's an actual art sketchbook. And it's not the plain, the, bleh, the plain paper sketchbook that you can get from moleskin. It's not that, it's the actual art sketchbook. So if you guys are ever interested in the moleskin sketchbooks, um, they're great to have. I love them. They're great for traveling around, but so is the Illo. And I'm one of those people. Um, I think I 
kind of talked about it. I do have like extreme social anxiety, but having a sketchbook with me in big public areas or my iPad with me, I always take my sketchbooks with me when I buy a new purse. If it's like going into Vera Bradley, I have to have my sketchbook with me so I can make sure that it fits inside the purse because you best believe it's coming with me to any kind of events. You know, it's a safety blanket kind of thing, which I say should be totally acceptable in any day or life. I feel that all kids or any age should be allowed to have their sketchbook inside of their bag and be able to take it and whip it out if they get overstimulated because man, I know what that is like. But back to my point, I noticed the same thing with the moleskin. The Ohuhu markers, they're kind of streaky and they will always bleed through their papers. I, I mean, I'm turning it over right now because I have it in front of me. Um, they will always bleed through onto the next page if you do like a really thick area. For example, that pink uh, square that's behind Peach definitely bled through onto the other page. But I'm trying to toy with a proactive kind of approach to it that I love. I don't know if you guys know Gretel Lusky. I think that's how you say her name. <laughs> she's on Instagram and she's on TikTok. I love her sketchbooks so much. She has just the right of creative messiness in a sketchbook and just letting her creativity go crazy. If you ever want sketchbook um, inspiration, go look at her stuff. Her sketchbooks are so great. And that's my inspiration is just like, how can I fill this with a ton of creativity? But I have seen hers and a couple of other artists who take either post-it notes or they take washi tape and they take another piece of paper and they tape it onto the back that has been bled through and they create on top of that, which is really fun and different and creative. And I love the idea of the post-it notes, plus getting like fun neon colored post-it notes and drawing on top of that and practicing stuff. Oh, that's so wonderful. And I did actually do this with my latest moleskin sketchbook. Uh, I took a piece of paper and I put it onto the back, but I got really pretty washi tape from Michaels and it wasn't as sticky as I thought it would be. <laughs> and I've got to tell you the worst mistake that I did with this most recent sketchbook. Um, <laughs> I got the fun Arteza glitter paints for Christmas from my mother-in-law. And I thought, hey, I'm going to put a bunch of acrylic paint. And it's not acrylic paint. It's gluey kind of glitter paint. <laughs> I thought I'm going to put it on back to front, back to front. Oh my goodness. That was the worst decision. And I... Do you ever just get like an ick feeling when you realized, man, I think I really ruined the sketchbook. And I have a ton of like, that's how I felt about the Render Crescent sketchbook, how it just kept making all my faces so wrong because of how badly it was bleeding. But I got the ick over this moleskin because of what I did with this glitter paint because they were sticking together. So I was creating pieces of artwork that were front to back and I would close it and it's once, of course, when glue gets hot or warm, it kind of gets a little bit more sticky and it sticks together. So I had a bunch of papers that I ripped and pieces of drawings that I had made in it and they were ripping apart and falling apart and it was ripping apart my heart. I, I don't have much more to say about the moleskin because of how like broken hearted I am over it. However, I am glad to be back with Illo sketchbooks. Um, I, I'm just gonna treat this thing like a lot of fun and just fill up much as much space as I can with it. I want to touch base with you guys on where I wanna go from here when it comes to YouTube. Um, I want to keep making longer content videos. I feel that, you know, I kind of have a good grasp on life circumstances. God forbid anything else happens, but life is so fast and throws so many curveballs that sometimes it's hard to keep up with a lot of stuff. But anyways, I would like to come back and make more longer content videos. As you can see, this is pushing about 25 to 30 minutes. And I like this type of 
like videos, I like doing, it's not really a time lapse because I did only go up to about four times fast because I want you guys to see the process that I'm coloring or how I line or how I sketch and how I approach things. I'm, I'm gonna do a Taylor Swift on you guys. Remember that one time when Taylor Swift was a country singer and then overnight she became a pop singer? <laughs> well, I'm gonna pull a Taylor Swift on you guys. I want to do more videos like this and sometimes I will touch base on some techniques and tutorials on art mediums, whether it be like Procreate because I've got a lot of fun Procreate tips and tricks for you guys. Or if it's like different art supply reviews like Ohuhu markers or different art mediums. I would love to share my tips and tricks when it comes to that. Um, but I'm not really so sure about character tutorials. I might do a couple here and there, but I don't see my channel being predominantly character tutorials as it has in the past because Steven and I talked about this. We want, the thing is, is that when you start stuff like this, like a YouTube channel about art or anything in general, like any kind of social media, art influencing, whatever, you want to make sure that it's something that you enjoy and get joy out of. And I find joy in this. I got to sit down with my sketchbook and I set up my camera, my crazy honking DSLR on a more stable <laughs> like setup that it did not hit me in the face. And you know, I get to talk to you guys again. I've heard a lot from my students in real life that they miss my YouTube videos. And just in general, like on TikTok and Instagram or Facebook, people say that they miss my videos. So that's why I wanted to come back to this. So if you can just, all my Swifty fans, you all rolled with her decision. If you could all just roll with mine as well, it'd be greatly appreciated. The biggest goal that I have for YouTube right now is to not get a YouTube burnout again. It was difficult. And I hope these kind of videos do well on my channel. And I'm so happy to be with you guys again, to talk to you guys. I've talked a lot, but I feel like that's what I needed for this video because yikes, a year and a half, where has this crazy woman been? Um, different stuff. But yeah, I've had fun. So no spoilers of the Mario movie because I can't tell you how many lives I've come across on different social networks of people sitting in the movie theaters and I keep seeing clips and I'm just like, why are you people the way that you are? <laughs> I mean, I know that they're trying to save everybody like a buck by going and watching, you know, no, it's illegal. It's illegal. It's illegal. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna head for maybe Thursdays being my primary days of posting. If if that goes well with you guys, please let me know. I'm good. obviously I'll post this on today, Thursday. Hello, even though it's like Monday. Um, <laughs> but I'd like to know if this is a good day for you guys. If this is when you would look forward to longer content and everything. And I just like to say hi and hello and if you ever have experienced art burnout in a certain area of your life please let me know in the comments i'd like to know that i'm not alone i'm not alone <laughs> i will see you guys later bye